Shalom. She are you David Spring to you from the land of Israel. Today we are about to discuss the tribes of Ireland. Ireland. The Irish called their land Ira. I assume that is how they pronounce it. They don't often use it. Uh, you'd think with all their nationalists uh, further that they seem to have, they would prefer using the native name. But for some reason they don't. You know, you see it on the stamps. You see the name Ira on the stamps. You see it elsewhere. But if they, they seem to prefer using the name Ireland for the place they live in. And at all events, we identify the Irish, a good portion of the Irish as a sin from the tribes of Israel. Because uh, a good portion of Western Europe are, do come from Israel. And so that also extends to people in the USA and North America, Australia and New Zealand who sent from Irishmen, sent from people from Western Europe all over the world. A good portion of them, not all of them, but a good portion of them come from the tribes of Israel. The tribes of Israel, originally 12 tribes, 12 tribes in the land of Israel. And uh, after the death of King Solomon, they divided into two different sections. The northern section, which had the majority of the tribes, 10 of the tribes, said that 12, 10 out of the 12 tribes were conquered by the Assyrians and taken away and exiled. And they went to different areas of the Syrian Empire. From there, they migrated to the west. And they lost consciousness of their ancestry as the Bible had predicted. The Bible had prophesied that it would do. See the book of Hosea and, uh, and elsewhere. And that is what they did. They lost consciousness of who they were, but they stayed together and they went to the, to the areas of Western Europe. And from there, they became what they are today. And they had a, a reason for this. There was a reason, a divine re purpose behind this. And uh, they, to some degree, uh, fulfilled that purpose, which was to uh, become uh, an example to the nations of the earth, to uh, rectify themselves, correct themselves, uh, reform themselves, and also help other nations uh, grow up, become like them to some degree, and uh, to set an example, and to help the others, and that is what they have done. Each nation in its own way. And Ireland is very big on uh, supporting other countries. It's probably the, the most active country, or one of the most active countries in the world, in this sense. And Ireland is also important, not so much because of what it is today, but because of the large number of people, especially in the USA, but also elsewhere, who come out of Ireland. Also in England, there are more descendants of Ireland who's in, uh, in Britain, whose ancestors' antecedents came from Ireland in recent generations than the Iron Ireland itself. So this is something worth taking into consideration. The Irish are important not only because of what they are in Ireland, because of what, also because of what they contributed to other nations around them. And descendants of Ireland in areas where the rest of the inhabitants are also descended from tribes of Israel. And uh, when we speak of Ireland, we uh, are referring to Northern Ireland rather than to Ulster, Nor uh, but Northern Ireland is also part of Ireland as well as being part of Britain. What applies to Ireland also applies to Northern Ireland to some degree, but since Northern Ireland also has a good, uh, an important segment in this population of those who descend from Scotland and from England, and uh, some of what part of so part of what we say relates to them. So everything has to be taken in its context. We have a, a friend, uh, Dr. Clifford Smith, Smith with a Y, S M Y T H, Dr. Clifford Smith of Belfast, Ulster, and he, he is a supporter of ours, a friend of ours. A few decades back, he visited us together with members of his family. In, here in Israel, we live in Israel, and he came to here, and he himself was a veteran member of the BIWF, the British Israel World Federation, and uh, he is also uh, quite an expert in the subject of British Israel, the, uh, the notion, the belief that the Russian tribes are to be found amongst the British and related peoples. And today is not that well known. But we believe in it in a modified form, 
And in the past, they were quite active, and they did a lot of research, and some of this research is still valid, still valuable. And Clifford supplied us with valuable, uh, hard, difficult to obtain documents from British Israel. And uh, this helped us in our own researches and in our writings. And uh, Clifford is also active in local Ulster politics in, in Belfast. You can look him up in, on the Wikipedia, he's his own entry. And we had, had, before he came to us, he had sent us a video clip of a talk he gave. And this talk he said that the Protestants in Ulster represent descendants of Joseph. And, but the Catholics, on the other hand, had mostly come from the south of Ireland and were descended from the Israelite tribe of Simeon. And this was shortly after the publication, when he gave this talk, shortly after the publication of her books, The Tribes, in 1993 which in our first edition, the first edition, we identified the Southern Irish with Simeon, with the tribe of Simeon. And uh, in the talk that Clifford gave, he pointed out that the tensions and ongoing conflict between Protestants and Catholics in, in Ulster, in Northern Ireland, could be attributed to that between Simeon and Joseph, and which according to the Midrashim, according to rabbinical tradition, and also it can be read out from the text itself in the Bible. It appears that the plot against Joseph, the brothers plotted against Joseph. Initially they intended to kill him, to throw him in, in, in a pit, in a hole in the ground and leave him to die through exposure to the elements. The last minute Judah intervened and uh, instead of leaving him there they sold him to a uh, a passing caravan, a passing band of Ishmaelites, the equivalent of Arabs, who took him down to Egypt and there sold him as a slave. And from being a slave, he he became eventually became the virtual ruler of of Egypt, and he helped save Egypt from famine and all of the world. All he helped save the Egypt and the surrounding nations from a famine that visited. Egypt and all of the countries around it. So I don't, so we don't exactly agree with this at present. We'll explain uh, in a couple of minutes where we differ, but uh, this was a talk that Dr. Clifford gave. And uh, now according to Irish Chronicles, Irish Chronicles, Irish legends and so on, the first inhabitants of Ireland had been the Fomorians, the people known as the Fomorians and the people of Dana. The Dana descend from the Israelite tribe of Dan. After them came the sons of Bog, the fair Bog. And they were descended, at least in part according to these records, from Samuel the son of Israel. Samuel the son of Israel is the equivalent of Simeon son of Israel. And then these in turn were overcome by the Gaels, the Gaels also referred to as Milesians or as Hiberni. And we identify these, this latter group as primarily descent from the tribe of Asher, the Israelite tribe of Asher, who was had input from other Israelite tribes. After them, after them we had other invaders such as the Vikings, most of whom in Ireland came from Denmark, in other places the Vikings came from either Denmark or from Norway, in this case most of the Vikings who came to Ireland came from Denmark and the Danes of Denmark descend from the tribe of Dan. And uh, after that came the Normans from England, the Norman invaders from England and uh, English descendants also of English descendants from the tribe of Joseph, also came and settled in Ireland. Many of them became Irish. Many of the Irish in Southern Ireland, that is including the Catholics, are descended from Englishmen. And uh, that, uh, that is what there was. We, or in Ireland we also find descendants of Jethro. Jethro was the fa father-in-law, Jethro was the father-in-law of Moses. He had descendants known as the Canaanites, they are mentioned in the Bible, and uh, many of them d descended in Northern Ireland. This is according to information br brought to our attention by correspondent who calls himself Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain 
and uh, they too settled in Ireland. And alongside them, or as well as them, they settled in Ireland, descendants of the children of Moses, that is, descendants of Moses. And Moses himself was from the tribe of Levi. In addition to that, we have other sources indicating that many from Judah also settled in Ireland, including numerous descendants from David. David had many, many descendants. The Bible tells us Jeremiah 33, verse 21. Jeremiah 33, verse 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I not avoid the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who minister to me. Jeremiah 33, 22 says, As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea measured, so will I not avoid the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who minister to me. In general, we now tend to identify the present-day inhabitants of Ireland as many coming from the Israelite tribe of Asher, the tribe of Asher, in Northern Ireland, we find more from Joseph as well as from Judah. But despite this, the tribe of Simeon was also present, was also prominent, and uh, exerted an influence in the Irish character. So, from some aspects of the Irish character, can be understood by comparing it to Simeon. The colour of Simeon on the breastplate of the high priest in the temple, he, uh, in the temple, the high priest had a breastplate, and in this, on this breastplate there were 12 precious stones, and each stone was uh, represented one of the Israelite tribes. So the tribe of Simeon was represented by an emerald, an emerald, a green emerald, emerald and the green is the national colour of, of Ireland. We also have red hair, many, a good portion of uh, the Irish, a good portion, more than 15% of the Irish have red hair, that is the highest proportion in the world, or well, one of the highest proportions in the world, and red hair was also associated with the ancient Israelites, and is also found amongst many Jews today, especially the Ashkenazim, but also in other, other communities. King David had red hair. The Midrash says that the tribes of Simeon and Levi were marked by a high incidence of Bohakanim, a type of people called Bohakanim, meaning that they were very white, very light skinned, coloured, and they had uh, blonde or reddish hair. And, we, and it says that many, the Midrash says that many from the tribes of uh, Simeon and Levi were this way. Ireland today as a country has the second highest income per capita in the world after Singapore. Singapore has the first place. Then the ranking of Ireland in recent decades per capita, income per capita has also has usually been quite high. Now it's the second place in the world also in the recent past it has also been quite high on the whole with, with ups and downs here and there but on the whole it's been quite high and this is because of, or attributed to sound economic and fiscal policies and also a contributory factor in this is that companies like to work in Ireland, like to invest in Ireland the Irish today have a reputation for being reasonably well educated, polite, informed, friendly, honest, reliable, and consistent. Now we're, so Ireland has, a, has good and bad elements in it. The Irish have good and bad elements in them, like everyone else, but uh, each country, each place has its unique mixture of its own. In the past, the Irish were often anti Semitic against the Jews. Most of the Irish during World War II were in favour of the Allies. Many fought for them. Many crossed the seas to volunteer in the British services. They were quite important. The Irish earned a good, a large number uh, of Victoria Crosses, the highest British medal for gallantry. A large number of, uh, of Irishmen earned such medals. They have a Wikipedia article about this. They are brave. They're also strong, active, 
and they have a reputation as being very capable warriors. And they also went across the seas to work in British factories, helping the British keep going against the, against the Germans. But in Ireland itself, in Ireland itself, the Irish government was pro was not pro-German, it was neutral, but it, it had an ambivalent attitude in some ways. More than half the Irish army defected, fled from Ireland and went to England and joined up with the English forces. After the war, they were punished or penalised for this by the, by the Irish officials. At all events, during the war, Ireland refused to accept Jewish children from Germany, even on a temporary basis, even a few, they didn't even accept one, not a single Jewish child did they accept as a refugee during the war. They did not want Jews, they said so. They had a, few, a small number of Jews in Ireland at the time and they were treated fairly, reasonably, but they couldn't, uh, not expected to do much in favour of their, of their brothers and sisters and, and members of their family overseas. And these were crying out to be saved. And the Irish did not take in any Jewish refugees during the war. But after the war, immediately after the war, the Irish did give refugee, the Irish did give refuge to Nazi war criminals and also to Croatian Nazi affiliates who had committed war crimes from the Nazi party was known as the Ustasha and was worse than the, the, the it's worse than the German Nazis in some ways. And the, the, the Irish help members of this evil organization to find refuge. Some of these people had murdered Jews, they also murdered Serbs, they murdered others in general, they're just murderers. Also, the Irish after the war were against the state of Israel from the beginning. They still are. And nowadays, they make, the Irish make protests against alleged Israeli treat, mistreatment of the Palestinians. Also, make protests against Jewish settlements in the Judah and Samaria, in the land of Israel. And they uh, are active in this and they uh, push themselves forward. They initiate protests as if uh, we are harming them by living here. And I'm not exaggerating. If anything, I'm downplaying the minute I, I'm understating the intensity of the hostility that many in Ireland, including many, many in the Irish government and the Irish media, seem to have against the Jews in the land of Israel for some reason. And it seems that they, the Irish are doing this for, for reasons of their own. They're using the Palestinians as an excuse to continue badgering the Jews. They don't act this way when people in other countries are suffering, or they, at least not to that degree. They seem to have it in for the Jews. So this is something worth taking into consideration because it raises a question as to what percentage exactly of Israelites there really are amongst them. Because anti-Jewish sentiment, instinctive active anti-Jewish sentiment, indicates that they are not descended from the Ten Tribes, even though other sources indicate that they are. So we should also mention that it's not a one-sided story. It's not entirely negative. It's not black and white. In the past, there were many Jew individuals of Irish descent who helped the Jews. And they helped the Jews in the Israeli War of Independence in 1948. Also, we had individuals who helped the Jews. In, in the USA, we had Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan. President Ronald Reagan was the son of an Irish Irishman, an Irish storyteller. And when uh, President Reagan became president in 1981 to 1989, he did much to help the Jews. He helped the Jews leave Russia. The Jews were in prison in Russia. They couldn't leave. And Reagan helped exert influ influence, influence and his pressure on the Russians to let the Jews leave and come to the land of Israel. And it helped, it worked. And Reagan said he was doing this to enable the Jews to be free to go to Israel and to keep the Jewish religion. 
And uh, so this is important. And also the USA under President Reagan, they extended their protection to Jews from Ethiopia who were in danger of being exterminated by the Sudanese and by the Ethiopian Gentiles. And uh, they had to get me gotten out of the country, taken into Sudan and then flown to Israel. And they did this, and the Americans helped do this under Reagan. They even helped fly the Jews to, the Jews of Ethiopia to Israel. So that, so it's not a one-sided one -sided story. We have important uh, Irishmen who helped the Jews. We have also have Irishmen who converted to Judaism and became good Jews. They are still around. They are here today with us. Uh, most converts do not like, after a generation or two, they do not like, uh, they do not like publicizing, but overdue publicity given to their ancestry, so we don't realize who they are, but they are quite plentiful, relatively plentiful in the land of Israel, and quite a few Irishmen are amongst them, descendants of Irish amongst them. Amongst them. Uh, relatively speaking, on a person-to-person -person basis, they are not that anti-Semitic compared to other people in Europe, but more so than, than some, uh, an ADL survey in 2014 said, found that 20% of Irish people, 20%, that is one in five, have some type of anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish views. In Germany it's 27%, in Greece it's 69%, in Italy it's 20%, in Portugal 21%, in Spain 29%, France 37%, so uh, Ireland with 20% is not bad according to those countries, but in the UK, in Britain it's only 8%, in the Netherlands it's 5%, in Norway it's 15%, in Sweden 4%. In uh, Eastern Europe it's much higher, Ukraine 49%, Poland 45%, Russia 30%, and so on. And amongst uh, Muslim nations it's way, way up off the charts, and so on. But despite that, that we have countries with more people who, who dislike Jews in them, amongst their population, they seem to be less virulent in protesting against the so-called oppression of the Palestinians by the Jews in Israel than Ireland is. Ireland seems to have, or some of its prominent personages seem to have a bee in their bonnet about this. They seem to be obsessed with the state of Israel. And so is the media. So that is a question that should be looked into. On the other hand, in Ulster, a good portion of the population appear to be pro-Jewish, in favour of the State of Israel. So, so uh, there are. Uh, uh, so this is uh, another phenomenon worth looking into. Also, many people in Ireland today ha have a third world, third world New Age type attitudes, lovey-dovey type experiences and, uh, and approaches to, to reality. And a prototype of this type of uh, behavior may be seen in the incident of Zimri from a prince of the tribe of Simeon in the Bible and the Midianite princess Cosby. The Bible in Numbers 25, it tells us that the Israelites are now wandering through the wilderness and come to a place known as Shittim, that is Akasha, the Akasha tree grove. This was near the borders of Moab, Midian, close to the land of Canaan. But Moab and Midian were antagonistic to Israel. The Moabites sent their, their females to fornicate with the Hebrews and to entice the males to participate in the ceremonies in honor of the god Baal, Baal of Peor. And when they did this, they were placing the whole of the Israelite nation in danger. So Moses ordered the leaders of the people to execute by hanging, hanging them by the neck, hang all such participants. And it so happened that some Midianite women, not only Moabite women, but some Midianite women that also joined the party, also doing the same thing as the others. And uh, a prince of Simeon, a, a prince of Simeon, Prince of Simeon, known as Zimri, 
prince of Simeon known as Zimri, who defied Moses, and in public before everyone, he took a Midianite princess in front of everyone, and he began to copulate with her. And uh, God was angry at this, and a plague started amongst the people. So Pindhas, Phineas in the English transliteration, Pindhas, the priest, son of son of Elazar, the priest, who was the son of Aharon. So Pindhas took a spear or a short lance, and he raced forward and he skewed the guilty couple in the very act, and this stopped the plague. We find this in Numbers 25 verse 7. Now when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aharon the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin, a javelin, like is a lance, a spear in his hand. He went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel and those who died in the plague were 24,000. And then he goes on and tells us further on. And now the name of this lot who was killed, who was killed with this Midianite woman, was Zimri the son of Salu, a leader of a father's house among the Simeonites. The name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, the daughter of Zor, who was head of the people of a father's house in Midian. So we have here a prominent member of the house of Simeon, Zimri, son of Salu making an indecent exhibition of himself with a foreign woman in public in order to defy Moses, in order to shame Moses, in order to shame the Torah, and to undermine the authority of the Torah. And he was punished, Pinchas punished him, and he saved Israel from uh, devastation, from a plague that was beginning amongst them. He stopped the plague. And uh, this act of Zimri is similar to what we might find in some cases amongst certain uh, left-wing, uh, New Age-type social political demonstrations. At all events, we should keep away from such people, from such actions, and cleave to the God of Israel, and believe in Him, and do what we can to live good lives. Thank you, may the Lord God of Israel bless you.